Hello folks, how you doing? Good to see you all. So, today we're going to tie the Pop Popovic's Beast Fly. I love tying this fly. It's a bit boring to video, I have to admit, because it's literally bucktail, ostrich, optional, uh, wing and flash, and some jungle cock eyes. So yeah, it's a bit boring to video, but I'm going to speed up some of the boring bits. Um, this one isn't particularly a big one. Um, we're limited by bucktail length over here a little bit, um, so I don't I don't tie ginormous ones. But this is, yeah, you can get away with three to four inch bucktail, no problem at all. And um, you just you just increase the number of shanks to make it longer. So you want me to, you want me to make it big and fat like some of them, but you can make it fairly long and they do an half move well. Now, the original is tied with mono. Um, I like tying with the shanks. Um, absolutely no problem with tying with the shanks at all. Um, I make my own to the size that I need. So you can buy them from Feynman if you want as well. Um, so this one's had a soak and it's taken on its nice shape. Um, that one hasn't. So you can see what it looks like. So don't be disheartened when you tie it and it doesn't look like that. So you need to give it a soak once you've finished tying them. Um, like I say, you can just tie it with just bucktail and nothing else. Uh, but I like to add a bit of ostrich in mine, or quite a lot of ostrich in this case. Um, and this fly is for GT, but it can be for any saltwater predatory fish. And, and you know, it's tied on a, uh, the new A-Rex uh, SA270 Blue Water hooks. Um, but you can tie these on pike hooks and fish them from pike as well. They don't actually take that long to tie once you get going. Uh, probably no longer than a normal pike fly, um, you know, a normal articulated pike fly. So give it a go, and um, so let's get tying. So in the device we've got a 15 millimeter homemade shank. You can buy these from Flyman, um, but I prefer to make them myself because I can double over uh, on the, each of the uh, each of the the eyes, um, and that helps with the tying. So if you can make them yourself, it will help. As I said, you can buy them if you need to. Um, I think they come in um, 10 mil, 20 mil, and 30 mil sizes. Now the first thing we need to do is to add a tail to this. So I'm selecting the longest bucktail I have, which isn't particularly long over here, but it's uh, it's long enough for this fly. So you don't need too much. So typically the longest. Um, part of the bucktail is, is near the base, these long fibers, but they have more air in them. So just, you know, look, look at look at your bucktail. If it's got too much air, don't select it um, because it will be quite difficult to control once you tie it in. So as we always do, we take the, uh, the short under fibers out. And so if we're looking for about that length, so I'm just gonna tidy up the ends. I'm just gonna lay that on top few wraps round, I'm just going to use my thumb to push it all the way around the shank. It's quite difficult because the shank is quite close to the, the vice head, so try and do your best. Then tighten down, like that. It starts um, opening up, just put some loose wraps close to the buck tail to close it back up again. And next we need some um, uh, some ostrich. Now I haven't got the longest ostrich in the world, so I'm looking for the longest feathers possible on here. <laughs> There's not many left. So um, I'm just, I've got a load in front of me, so I'm just gonna select a few. We just need a th three or four on the tail here. Just cut his nose now. And just make sure they're tapered to so the different lengths and then tie them in on top. There we go, something like that. And tie that down and come to the head. Now for the bucktail we're using here, I want bucktail that's got some I don't know how well you can see that, but it's 
it's got some wave to it. It's not particularly long, but it's all the same, you know, it's pretty much the same length. Now this is getting to the end, but I think I can get one more fly out of this. Um, but typically I use anywhere from here down to here. The, the fibres nearer the base of the tail are have too much air. So you, you, you need a bit of stiffness in this. So I'm going to select this bucktail, although it's not the longest. We don't need a, a great deal of amount. What I tend to do with beast flies is start fairly sparse and start building up thickness as I get closer to the head. So about that much. Now this is probably the exact length that I need, so I don't want to take too much off the tips. So I'm just going to just tidy them up. I'm just going to tie that down. A few wraps over, and we're just going to manipulate that butt hole all the way around the shank. The best you can, try and get it as even as possible. Just take your time. That looks about right. Now hold those butts and pull tight. Okay. And you can manipulate those fibres out so they're spread all the way around. This is where I could do a look, another camera to look at it from this angle, but as you have to take my word for it, they're well spread. There you go. And just use your push tool. Push that back. Now I'm going to cheat now. I'm not going to hollow tie it. I'm going to come over the top a couple of times and pull down and then come in front. As you can see straight away that gives me the tape that I'm looking for. So you can cheat if you like. Or you can tie it hollow and use lots of thread up. It's up to you. I need to settle on, there we go, I'll settle on that one. Now what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to put a lot of ostrich on this. I don't have to use ostrich, but I'm going to. So it's going to be a bit boring, because we're going to do the same steps three times. Actually four times. So I'm just looking at that ostrich and making sure it's, it's good. Tie that down. Use your thumb to spread it round. I'm going to do the same on the bottom. Do the same again here. Just use your thumb to spread them round. They go all the way around and tie them in. Now, what we're going to use now is some Hedron Wing and Flash. Um, very, very fine flash material. You don't need much of this. Just take a few strands out and then place over. It's very fragile actually, so I'm not too worried about having the long lengths here. I'm just going to tie it in. Just need to give the fly a little bit of a little bit of sparkle. And then we finish. You need to use Apoglap, varnish, head varnish. I've got some liquid fusion because I'm allergic to all the other stuff. If you wonder why I'm using it. I must have said that in every single video. For those that haven't seen them before, that's why. So take that out, grab another shank, place that in. Oh, I forgot to mention the thread I'm using is GSP 100. I'm actually using Vivas thread for a change. So, um, probably if you saw my earlier videos, I use Vivas a lot, and then I got through so much of it, I, I sourced another supplier. On, on, you know, that give you big spools. But I've got some Vivas to, to use again, and to be honest, it's very similar to my other thread. Strong, nice and strong for the bucktail. Right, so put some thread wraps down to lock that shank. 
add a little bit of glue. I'm not worried about waiting for this to dry um, because it doesn't interfere the materials too much and it, it soaks into the, the thread well. So we're going to use the same bucktail again and we're going to take pretty much the same amount. It's not the longest bucktail in the world this one but it's got a nice nice wave to it and it doesn't have to be super long to tie beasts I have found so um, yeah especially in over in Europe the bucktail isn't the best in terms of the length um, so you know you can make it work there's slightly too much in there so I'm going to take some out I'm going to lay that down on top, a few wraps around, I'm going to manipulate it around the, the shank so we get a good coverage. Just check it, that looks good, tie down, get rid of any loose ones and if it gets untidy at the bottom here just give it a little snip. I don't, I don't mind leaving the butts, help support the bucktail. So we cut them off too short, they'll find the bucktail will collapse eventually. And spray that out. Like that, and use your push tool to push that back. Make sure that they're all the way around and you haven't got too much on one side. That looks good. Again, I'm going to cheat on this one. Come over twice, pull down tight, come in front. A lot of the thread. There we go. So it's going to be the same length, same angle as the last one. Come down, tie them in, push them round. Get those ends straight, tie them in. Like so. Oops, like that, down. like that, get some wing and flash, very little amount, oops, tie that in over the top, if it's too long like this one is, just give it a trim, that's what you need to do, okay, like that, Spread that around. We finish. On glue on that head, so let me do that quickly. Just a little bit of dab of glue just to keep that thread from unwrapping. There we go. shank going. The ends are pretty pretty good in terms of straightness so tie that in. A few wraps around and then just let's clamp that back. Wrap your butt tail all the way around the shank. Make sure it's all evenly distributed. That looks pretty good. Hold your, your butts, pull tight. Now we're going to hollow this one. So we want the angle to be slightly steeper. So separate all your butt tail. Make sure it's all where it should be. Before you push back. That looks pretty good. Separate it. Sometimes it does bunch together. We go like that. And just press down with your your fingers, just to manipulate that bucktail so it behaves itself. We go and just stroke your back, bring your feather forward, and start building a dam in front. Here we go. 
perfect. So it's a slightly steeper taper than the last two. We want to start. We want to start. You know, probably keep it at that taper now all the way to the end of the, the fly. Tie that in. Lose a few down there. And wrap it all the way around. Just use just use your thumb to push it around. I'll do. and tighten there. Again, wing and flash is a bit boring because we're repeating the same steps over and over, but that's the beast. So we're taking some wing and flash, making it a bit shorter. Bring it under the thread, tie it down. Separate those end ones, you can probably go underneath a little bit just to distribute the flash. Bit finish. Some glue. I'm ready to start turning on the hook then. Okay, so let's take this out of the vise. We've got too much glue on there. Let's take that out. So that's the tail done. As you can see it doesn't look much at the moment, but once we start, once we give that a soak, that'll look nice. So for the hooks, we're going to be using the new Aerex saltwater range. Now this is the SA270 Blue Water, and I'm using a 4.0. Nice strong hook. Now this fly is for salt, and then these hooks have been fantastic. So if you haven't tried them yet, give them a go. Let's put some thread down. I've got one shank here that I made, which I've just created an eye with, so I didn't double over. How well you can see that. Um, that's to lock on top here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take take our our shanks, thread that over. Now you could use wire to put this in position, but I've I prefer using um, shanks to do this. So we're going to press that down. And lock it, making sure everything is straight. We're going to come slightly around the bend. So those shanks are parallel with the, the shank of the hook. That's enough, and we're going to give quite a few thread wraps on here to lock it. Perfect. So let's use our hair clip to hold that back in place. Give it Give that a few wraps. There we go. And we can start our bucktail here. I'll put some glue over this first. Now, in terms of locking that shank, you can, if you make your own, you can mess about with different configurations here where you're locking it. Sometimes I just fold a bit of wire over. Um, sometimes I go through the eye and then back underneath. But um, I haven't really noticed any difference in the way you do it. It always tends to hold, so it's up to you what you do. So we can use bucktail, set from the same bucktail so it's nice and consistent. And we can use a little bit more this time. We're going to slightly increase the amount as we move closer to the, to the head. The length is going to stay exactly the same. That's a good thing about these beasts. You can, they're actually fairly simple to tie as long as you keep the same length all the way so we're looking for about that much so we're just taking the under fibers out so we're going to tie that down going to manipulate that around the hook shank again make sure it's evenly distributed which it is and pull tight some good thread wraps to keep it secure. And now we're going to 
manipulate that bucktail back, making sure it's perfect all the way around, and then press down like so. There we go. We're going to come bring our thread forward, and we're going to start building that dam in front of it again. Yeah, that's about perfect. Now what you can do is you can add some zapper gap. I can't because I'm allergic to it. But you can add some zapper gap here. Or you could put a little bit of fine UV resin like Deer Creek Fine Flex. Just on the, on the dam to stop it slipping. Um, I'm not having any problems with this slipping so I'm not going to bother. But, but I will glue in between with liquid fusion shortly. Right. So again, we're going to use ostrich. Now I'm struggling for long feathers here, so I'm going to have to quickly look to see what I can find. There we go, some long ones, or longish. If you hear any background noise, I have some cats fighting. <laughs> I have two cats, and one is a bully. What she wants is food. She sat here by her food bowl, looking at me, saying, feed me. And I'm busy, so she's going to have to wait. Bengals. They're like having a dog in the house. All right, so we're putting the ostrich down again. It's a bit tricky underneath. Making a real hash of that for this. I think I've got to wear that. Just use your thumb to move it around. There we go, and then tie down. In your flash. Bring your flash on and tidy up. I come forward. I'm going to have one more white in here, in front of that eye that you can see. Go. So we've got a little bit left. Let's take those fibers out. Let's just straighten those ends like that. And tie down. Bring that forward. Just move that butt all the way around. So we've got a good distribution there. where you have a rotary device so it's so handy. Pull tight. Looks good. Just use your push tool. Oh I've got another push tool by the way. A very swish one. Let's use that. There you go. Well that was easier. <laughs> I should use this more often but I've Old habits. Push that back. Squeeze down. Come in front. And build that dam up. There we go. Just like that. You know, you do one bit and then you repeat it. But that's tight. Just manipulate that ostrich all the way around. Same again underneath, four or five strands. Wrap it in. There we go. Perfect. Last bit of wing and flash. Tighten like I was originally, but to be honest, it just it's so fine this flash. You just need to give that fly a bit of sparkle. I wouldn't be too precise with it. There we go, perfect. So coming from the eye, we're now down to the last two bucktail ties. And what we're going to do with this fly is we're going to tie it like a bulkhead. So I'm going to use some sort of mustardy tan coloured bucktail. I've got a bit of this left. So we're going to use some of that. And I'm going to choose up my longest, longest fibres. And we're going to add a bit more than we we were done with the, uh, the hollow tying. 
I'm just taking that off. This one's really quite fine bucktail. It's almost like the top hairs on a on a tail. You know, so. So what I'm going to do is a little trick to create a bulkhead. Now, while well, you can see this, um, but as you see, all those ends are straight. We don't want that. We want to taper them because it looks a bit. Wow, it doesn't look very professional. So I'm just pulling the hairs through and laying them back on top. Now I do this with all my bulkhead tying now. Just makes things a lot easier. Rather than cutting into it, I've just taken the hairs out and then laying them back on top. And as you can see, there's no straight. There's no straight edges. And it only takes seconds to do. So we're looking for about here. And we're going to reverse bulkhead it. So I'm going to tie that down. And it just gives the head a bit more bulk. I lay that on top, a few wraps, use our thumb to push that bucktail all the way around, like that. Here we go, hold our butts again, although I think I might have gone a bit low there, but let's push some of that back up again. There we go. Hold your butts, pull tight, secure wraps. Use your push tool, oh, well, I'm done with it, there it is. And we're gonna Push it back like that. So we're going to pull it down in front. Not much of one. That's what we need. We're going to come forward, and we've got some some nice long brand. This is a really nice bucktail. And we're going to take the fibres nearer the base for this. That's, they work best when you're tying bulkheads. So a good generous amount again. So you want to give that head a bit of bulk. I've lost my scissors. Again, take all the under fibers out. So it's, that's a little bit too long. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with this is take a little bit off the, the bottom like that. And I'm gonna do what I did with the tan. I'm just gonna pull those fibers through. And lay them back on. There we go. What it does, it tapers tapers that side, the tops, the tips. You know, and it tapers the bottom. If you've got any super long ones, just just give just give them a trim off. Like that. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is measure up. Lay a little bit of glue down on there, make sure everything is secure. And we're gonna take a few wraps round. We're gonna push that thumb all the way around. To make sure we've got a, a good even distribution. And that looks pretty good. Hold our butts, because they'll spin, pull tight. There we go. Use our push tool. So we've got plenty of space of the eye still here. That's fine. We could probably go one more, really. I'm not going to. I need to put some um, some jungle cock on there. Just build that down in front. That's enough. Once we've soaked that, that bucktail behave itself. Now we can use some jungle cock. Now you can use substitute or you can use the real thing. I've got some the real thing here, so I'm I'm going to use it. Now a little tip that I saw, I'm just picking a couple of nails that will suit this fly, same size. Now a little tip is to um, 
which I got from somebody else, I can't remember who it was. So forgive me, whoever that is, is just to add a little bit of um, UV on the on the orange. Because you'll find that those nails they, they do split. And to keep them in place a little bit longer, tap of UV is all you need. And then hit it with a torch. That's usually enough. So what I'm going to do, I'll take the take a little bit of the excess off. I'm going to tie it on this side first. You obviously won't be able to see this, but trust me, they look fine. And pull it through. I'm going to do the same for the other side. A little bit of UV on them. You don't need much, just a, a light covering of uh, Deer Creek Fine Flex or another, you know, very flexible, uh, very thin UV resin. Last of the torch. I'll do the same on the other side. Tie that on. Making sure they're, they're good. And we're going to double over. Oops. That wasn't very clever. Take the uh, tag ends off, do the same on this side, double over, so those those um, nails aren't coming out. And then tidy up with finish. Job done. So a little bit of glue. To the head, what I tend to do is just get the get a brown marker and just colour that that thread in brown. Um, but I won't do that. But this is this is one I did earlier, and that's had a soak. So you can see, yeah, they look good. What's if that's had a, a couple of soaks actually? So what I do is get a piece of wire and just hang it hang it by the radiator after I've given it wet, and it it takes its shape. Brilliant. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe and um, I'll talk to you again. Cheerio.